I'm visiting the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, which is about an hour and a half north of Birmingham and about an hour and a half south of Nashville, Tennessee. This attraction is set up because the Redstone rocket facility was here in the Marshall Space Flight Center. This is where the U.S. government decided to hide Nazi rocket scientists that surrendered to the United States Army in Germany at the end of World War II. Most famous of these scientists was Werner von Braun, who was the director of the Apollo program back in the day. They had been working on the V-2 rockets which were used against England and parts for a hundred of these rockets were recovered. The scientists knew they wanted to go with the Americans and not with the communist Russians, though the Russians did get some. So they prepared all the kinds of documents and paperwork and various other hardware to come out with them to enhance the odds of being protected by the U.S. government. They were moved into Huntsville because who would think to look for them in the middle of Alabama, up in the mountains part of Alabama. There were some adjustment pains with the locals since they had all their needs provided for and the locals were scrambling trying to find food and work at the end of the war. But they quickly integrated into the society and improved the school systems and probably improved the average IQ of the area given these were highly trained scientists and physicists with experience building rockets. I last visited this place, I don't know, maybe when I was 12 years old or so. Found it pretty fascinating then. I think it's taken a step back from those days, as you'll see later in the video. But there were plenty of exhibits, and for people not able to go to the Kennedy Space Center or the Johnson Space Flight Center in Houston, this is a worthwhile place to visit to see some of the old NASA history and hardware. This was one of the first capsules used to launch a monkey into space and bring him back alive, at least the first one for the Americans. This is also the original home of Space Camp and there were several displays scattered around showing lists of astronauts who had gotten their first taste of the space program through the Space Camp program here, which is somewhat expensive but sends you around on training for hypothetical missions for a week or so and really gets you indoctrinated into the NASA culture. A display of flags of country that have participated in the space program, specifically the space station. No communists need apply. Some of the space camp graduates that I referred to earlier. Outside we have the obligatory rocket garden showing various examples of space vehicles. That high pitched sound you hear is an invasion of cicadas, amazingly loud in this area. You could even hear them driving down the interstate with the air conditioning on and the windows closed, which to me is kind of amazing that insects can make that kind of sound. But apparently they all synchronize and that really increases the volume.
note that this Huntsville facility initially was focused purely on military goals and not really on a civilian space program, which only came later after the Russians kind of showed us what was possible. There were several ballistic missiles, some of which I had model rockets of as a kid. It's a little disappointing that they charge $30 per person to enter this place, and yet they can't afford to keep these historic vehicles in better condition. Most of them were suffering, suffering from oxidation, paint flaking off, really kind of a downgraded display from what you would expect. This gives you an idea of the poor condition of these things, left out in the elements without any protection, and again, how much would it cost just to paint them? A little bit of sandpaper, maybe. Shame, shame, shame is whoever would say that. I guess that was Gummer Pyle that said that. At the end of the Apollo program, there were supposed to be three more missions to the moon, but Congress cut the funding. So the three Saturn V's that had already been created, ready to go to the moon, wound up as museum pieces. One was in uh, Florida outside the vehicle assembly building for many years until it got so oxidized they had to renovate it, and now it's inside the Apollo Center indoors. Uh, Huntsville Space and Rocket Center and another at the Johnson Space Flight Center in Houston, Texas, which I haven't seen. I've seen the other two, of course. It's kind of a sad story, even though it's a museum piece, this thing was created for millions, if not billions of dollars in today's money to go to the moon, but never flew because Congress lost interest in the lunar space program. And this is the Saturn V set up much like it is in Florida. So this is the real one that could go to the moon. The other one was for Earth orbit testing. and the bicycle that led to the escape of Werner von Braun and his team of scientists been in Huntsville, Alabama, North Alabama. Several retired NASA engineers and others that participated in the Apollo program were actually here doing some of the narration and answering questions about various exhibits. This is Ron Paulus. I published a brief interview with him in a separate video that you can also find on the channel. Very interesting perspective on the past and the future of the space program in the United States. When Apollo 11 returned, if you were alive when this happened, they quickly put the astronauts into this trailer on the Hornet aircraft carrier just in case they carried bacteria back from the moon that would wipe out humanity.
They had to stay here about six weeks, later transferred to a fancier facility in Houston. This is the command module from Apollo 16, which was one of the last lunar landing missions. So if you're near Birmingham or North Alabama or Huntsville, it's worth a visit if you're a space nerd like me. And they actually had a fairly decent sized moon rock, larger than the one on display at the Kennedy Space Center, but you don't get to touch this one. It is cut in cross sections so you can see a bit of the inside. See you later.